Hey guys, in this lesson, we continue to build on the shading effect we started in last week's lesson. Here we'll be applying secondary shadows to the character. Last week, we took a look at how to create a basic cartoon shading effect for your characters and objects. If you have yet to look at that tutorial, I advise that you take a look at it because we'll be doing a lot of the same work here in this tutorial when we create the secondary shadows and I think you'll benefit a lot from that first video before jumping over to this video. So once you're caught up and good to go, we can get started. Okay, so first we'll need to make a new vector layer and we will name this vector layer Face Shading 2. Now, you could of course name this whatever you want, just as long as you know that this is the layer that you'll be using to make your shadows or to create the secondary shadows or shading for this character. So coming up here now, we'll take the Add Point tool and we'll first start with the nose. We're going to create a second shadow for that. We can keep the color the same as the original shading and we can adjust accordingly if need be as we kind of go on here. But we'll create a shape that is similar to the shape of the first except it's going to hug more of the outline of the nose and the nostril. And we can create a shape and turn the stroke off just like we did before with the first shadows. And we can come in here with the curvature tool and just tighten everything up. And of course you can make any adjustments that you need to with your translate point tool. So once you render this out, you can see that there is a now slight darkening around the nose, which is what we want. It's very subtle, but in this case, subtle is good. You know, as long as it looks good and it makes it more dynamic, that's the effect we're going for. So now we'll do the same with the top of the left eye. We'll just kind of outline the shape of the first shading effect and then we'll come in here and do the same for the second except we'll kind of cut it in half. We won't go all the way to the end of the face. We'll just kind of go down near the middle of the eyelid and we'll kind of add a little bump into the eyelid as well just to kind of give it more of a uh, look that it's hitting the eyelid. So once you have created your shapes and you've removed the strokes you can come in here and you can use the curvature tool and tighten things up of course move things around if need be with your translate points tool. It's all about playing and molding just like anything in Anime Studio. And we can come in here and kind of make a more obvious bump effect for the shadow on that eye. Rendering it out, it's looking okay but maybe the left eye should have a similar effect to the right. Maybe it shouldn't cover the whole eye. So we'll take our points here and we'll move them back so that we can mimic the effect of the shadow of the right eye. So coming here like this, we can kind of move these points out just a little bit and create that bump effect, kind of like that little thing sticking out just like we did on the right eye. Now, of course, you can play with this as much as you need to but if we check this out right now and we render it, we can see it's looking a little bit better. However, I think the shadows could do with some softening. So we can take the Select Shape tool, click on one of the eye shadows, and we can adjust the softening effect in your Style Palette drop-down menu to about 3, and we'll simply copy and paste the effect on both sides. And we can see that's looking a bit better. Now, of course, you could always adjust the colors here. You could try to make this a little bit lighter as an example. And you could just copy and paste with your style palette on both sides to get the same color. And you can see now it's looking a little bit more seamless. There is definitely a little bit of a darker effect there, but it's not as jarring or abrupt. So now with the lip shadow, we can kind of do the same thing. Let's just darken that a little bit. And we don't have to add a secondary shadow, we can just, you know, make it a little bit darker. And now we'll go into the ear here. And we'll just go on to the ear shadow layer, since we won't have any points intersecting. And we're just going to draw a shape 
that goes around the outlines here of the inner ear. And we can come in here and tighten things up. Now this isn't necessarily realistic, but it will kind of boost the shading effect on the ear. Just remove the stroke after creating the shape. And we can see now things are shaping up. Of course, you can always make those little adjustments if you need to. And it's looking okay. However, we might need to adjust the color. We can come in here to the style palette and make it a little bit darker. Now it's a little bit too dark. So let's come back in one more time and lighten it up. Now, again, as you can see, it's always about playing. You might have to render several times just to get the right colors for your shading. And that's just kind of how it goes. We can also do a little bit more with the nose here as well. We could do a lot more things here, but we'll focus on the nose here for the final portion. We will come in here and try to find the shadow for the nose initially here, which is the face shading. Remember, holding an alt and right clicking, you can select shapes without having to go to their layers if you're on a PC. And what we can do here is just come in here and move that shadow up so it kind of intersects with the eye shadow. And we'll just kind of morph it around the nose a little bit. And come in here and just do some tightening. And what you'll really want to do here is make sure that the shadings, that the shadows between the two, between the eyes and the nose are going to match up. So if we come up here, you can see that we have a little bit of an issue there. We can just come in here and make sure everything matches up just like that. Bring that one up a little bit. Get it as close as you can. Of course, that can be a little bit difficult, but if you get it as close as you can, it should be then good. You don't want it to overlap because then you'll have an obvious line. And you don't want them too far away because you'll have obviously a gap. So it is a uh, kind of a fine line. So it's all about morphing, of course. And once you render out, you can see that looks pretty good. We have now the shadow coming down and it just gives it a little bit more depth to your character. Of course, with the shading already, you already have some depth. And while again, these shadows we just added may seem subtle, it really does just bring things out and kind of solidifies the shading effect a little bit more. But anyway, that is what we have for you this week. If you have yet to see the first shading tutorial, be sure you check that out. You can click on the annotation to view that tutorial. If you'd like more tutorials in general on Anime Studio Flash and more, you can subscribe to our channel. We are releasing weekly tutorials. We also have a website, IncredibleTutorials.com, and we are also on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. My name is Chad Trofgerben. I did the narration for this tutorial. Jim Mills recorded, and this is his character design. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you next time.